Have you ever noticed how almost everything we buy has a warning label? Now, if you live life on the wild side like me, you might not pay that close of attention, but those labels are there for a reason. Sometimes they're actually helpful, but other times they make you wonder just who is buying this product. I mean, if they had to put a warning on it, I'm guessing it means that someone did the thing that they're warning against, right? Here's what I mean. These aren't the exact labels, but this is basically what we all see or hear. Don't put shampoo in your eyes, duh. Don't spill hot coffee on yourself, ouch. Or don't drive on the wrong side of the road. But in this series called Do Something, we're talking about injustice. So if justice is something fair, right, or equal, then injustice is the just opposite of that. So when we talk about injustice, we're talking about the things in this world that are not right, unfair, or unequal. Last week, we said that the first step is seeing injustice. It's choosing to get close enough to listen to and learn about it from other people, to open our eyes and begin to notice injustice around us. But I think that seeing injustice should come with its own warning label, one that says, what do we do with difficult questions? Here's what I mean. Seeing injustice can leave us asking a lot of questions, both about the injustice itself and the God who's supposedly in control of the world where it happens. Maybe you see an injustice in this world and you wonder things like, why would that person say that? Or how could someone do that to someone else? Or what makes stuff like this happen? Or why isn't anyone doing something about it? Or maybe you've landed on a really hard question when it comes to injustice, a question that feels so difficult to answer. And that question is, why isn't God doing something about this? Maybe you feel nervous, I even said that out loud, because we're not supposed to even question God, right? After all, he's God and he can do whatever he wants. Or maybe you're like, yeah, that's exactly what I keep asking. You probably feel relieved that someone finally said it out loud. Or maybe this is the very reason you're still not sure about all this Jesus stuff. You can't imagine yourself being a Jesus follower if he's not going to do something about the brokenness you see around you. No matter where you are or what our world looks like right now, God is big enough to handle our questions, even the difficult ones. All sorts of people who have gone through all sorts of things have been trying to answer these questions since the beginning of time. So why do we keep asking? Because it bothers us. After all, how can a good God allow things like human trafficking, prejudice, poverty, racism to happen and do nothing? Thankfully, we don't have to guess or assume where God is in the midst of all this. We don't have to guess at what God is really like or if he really cares. We can look at his son, Jesus, who is the best way to see what God is really like. Several people who knew Jesus personally and hung out with him took the time to write down what they saw and heard so that people like you and me, the ones who didn't get to see it with their own eyes, would know what happened. Today, we're going to take a look at an eyewitness account of Matthew, a book written by one of Jesus' closest followers and friends. Sometimes in church, we call this the book of Matthew or the gospel of Matthew. No matter what you call it, Matthew hung out with Jesus and knew what he was all about. Maybe that's why he took the time and wrote down this thing that he saw. Here's what he said. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. See, Jesus was teaching, healing, and helping people as he shared the message of what God's kingdom is really like. See, he talked about things like the outcast being loved, the slaves being freed, the oppressed being rescued, and the hungry being fed. In other words, he's talking about justice. Everywhere he went, Jesus had something to say and do about people being treated unfairly or in a way that wasn't right. See, Matthew continues, he wrote, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. See, Jesus modeled for us what God is really like when it comes to injustice. First, Jesus saw. You know, he saw the injustice, the hurt, and the brokenness. And when he saw Jesus cared, that's what compassion is about. So if you've ever wondered, God is for justice. In fact, thousands of years earlier, he said so through the prophet Isaiah. For I, the Lord, love justice. So we know that God loves justice, got it. But that still doesn't answer the question, why doesn't he do something about the injustices around us today? Why doesn't he wave a magic wand or do that whole miracle thing he was so good at? This is great, because Matthew gives us a clue in the next verse. Look at what Jesus said next. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. 
Okay, so maybe you don't talk a lot about harvesting and planting and gardening, but here, Jesus is talking about work. See, he lived in a farming community. So when he started talking about planting and harvesting, it wasn't weird. That kind of work required a lot of effort. So when he saw what was going on, Jesus had compassion and he also responded by telling them it's time to get to work. He's basically saying there's plenty to be done and there's plenty of room for more people to get involved in the work. Now, let me make this really personal for you and I. What if God has a plan to do something about injustice and what if we are the plan? Like what if the miracle Jesus has in mind isn't making injustice magically go away, but instead it's about you and me doing the work to end injustice on his behalf? What if it's us responding to all the things he already cares about? What if the plan is us becoming more like him? I think it's possible, and, and here's why. See, the Apostle Paul, whose life was changed by Jesus, wrote letters to the early church and taught them what it looks like to be a Christian. And he used this word picture to describe the church. All of you together are Christ's body, and each one of you is a part of it. Paul uses the illustration of one body made up of all of its individual parts. Even though it may seem like the ear is independent from the toe, the whole body relies on each part in order to function as God designed it to. In the same way, God designed the body of Christ or the church to work together to help each other out. So when we're talking about injustice, it's not that God isn't there or doesn't care, but instead God is calling his church, his people, to be his hands and feet here on earth. In other words, God is doing something about injustice. Let me, let me repeat that. God is doing something about injustice. Think about that. God is doing something already about racial injustice through us. God is doing something about violence towards women and the plan is us. God is doing something about sex trafficking, hunger, poverty, modern day slavery, and all the injustices we see on a local level and on a global level. And we get to be a part of it. So the question is, will you participate in what he's already doing? If so, where do we start? Here are a couple of steps you can take to begin. The first step is to rethink what we think about injustice. In other words, it's to change our minds about the way we see God, the world, and ourselves when it comes to injustice. Maybe it's time to rethink what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Maybe you thought faith was about singing songs and showing up to church and praying. Now, those things are good things, but to follow Jesus is so much bigger than that. Following means you start to see the world like he sees it. You care about what he cares about and you treat people the way he would treat people. Then you can begin to do something about the brokenness in this world because you know that it's what Jesus is calling you to do. You can also rethink your responsibility. I mean, maybe you thought responding to injustice wasn't exactly a teenager thing. Or maybe you thought it was important to only care about certain ones. Maybe today is a day to start changing your idea about how injustice impacts us all. To start rethinking how you can think about what you can do personally in response to it. The second step is to change the questions you might be asking. Instead of asking, where is God? Ask, where am I? Maybe the next step for you is to choose to be part of what God is already doing in the world. To ask God to begin to show you where you can start working towards justice in your community, your school, or in the world as a whole. Once you've taken these steps, it might be time to find a way to fight justice. What do you see that's breaking your heart? Step up, serve, give your time, give your energy, give your money. Take the skills, personality, the resources that God has given you and find ways to use them to help bring justice to the injustices that God has shown you. Who is working to fight injustice in that area? And how can you partner with them? Over and over again, we can see that the Bible teaches us that God cares deeply about injustice and wants us to do something about it. This means that his people should be known for being people who do something about injustice. So just imagine if we became known as a group of people who were the most compassionate, the most kind, the most just, the most resilient, the first to speak up, and the first to stand up for others experiencing injustice. Like imagine the, the positive impact we could have in our community, our schools, and our world. Imagine the opportunities that we would have to show people that God is for them and God is for helping those who are experiencing injustices. This week in small group, 
I want you to think about this. What if that were true about your small group? What if that were true of your friend group? What if the Christians at your school or in your, in your neighborhood were the most compassionate, the most kind, the brave, the most vocal about injustice? How might that change the way people see God? Imagine if the people you know would be more willing to believe God is doing something when it comes to injustice because they saw you doing something. And all because we know that even when it might not seem like it or might not feel like it, God is doing something about injustice.